Well then, that's it for the MLS road trip. Uh, there's one more game, of course, that Toronto FC has to play next week uh, against the Montreal Impact. Uh, the first leg uh, away of the Voyagers Cup semifinal. Uh, that's important to me. Uh, I hope it's important to Toronto FC as well. I don't think that a, a, a very small little four-game cup run uh, is going to be the, the deal breaker between TFC not making the playoffs in 2015. So I hope we don't see uh, the Academy kids or the TFC 2 team playing uh, on Wednesday. I really hope the TFC puts out a good lineup and uh, puts the boots to, uh, uh, to the Montreal Impact as it bloody well should be. Now, uh, if you've been watching these videos this season, you know that I was uh, uh, saying that we need to get nine points to make this road trip uh, uh, be as successful as we all wanted it to be. And they did it. They got the nine points. Uh, they got two shutouts. And I'm going to get to uh, an incredible statistic at the end of this video about the shutouts uh, and about how long it's been since TFC has had two shutouts uh, on the hop in Major League Soccer. It's a long time ago, but I'll get to that a little later. We got it. We got the nine points. Uh, that's a 1.3 points per game record, I think. Uh, if you average it out over the nine, uh, over the seven games, the, th uh, the, uh, the nine points. The, uh, the thing to keep in mind is, uh, and just to give you some context and take, it, take of it what you will, I went back and I took a look at some 2014 statistics preparing for this video and one of the things that jumped out at me was the away form of DC United in uh, their uh, Eastern Conference uh, winning uh, uh, you know, campaign of last year. They averaged 1.3 points per game away from home uh, and uh, they actually ended up winning the, winning the conference. They didn't win, uh, of course, the, uh, the they didn't win the Supporters' Shield, but they got into the playoffs. They got a bye, uh, and uh, I think in a week in Eastern, Eastern Conference, that's about the best that you can ask for. So that should hopefully give uh, give you guys some context as to you know how well they've done. The frustrating part of it all uh, is if you score 11 goals, and they've scored 11 goals, people, so far this season, which is pretty credible, uh, creditable, I should say. Uh, away from home in a uh, in a tough league with again for all intent and purposes a very new team teammates just learning how to uh, uh, you know to get together a lot of travel a lot of weather issues a lot of sadly poor officiating I thought by the way today uh, Villarreal was actually pretty decent uh, if you don't hear about the referee that's really I think all you can ask for but I digress but if you're getting uh, you know almost two goals a uh, well, a goal and a half a game uh, away from home in this league, you should be securing more uh, than three wins out of those seven. And we all know, of course, what happened in some of those games. Uh, what have we learned? I think uh, this is an interesting signpost now that we're at, especially since the Voyager's Cup is starting up next week and we've got the home opener uh, a week from tomorrow. Well, obviously, it starts with uh, it starts with three new newcomers. It starts with Sheru, it starts with Altador, and it starts uh, especially with the Atomic Ant himself, Sebastian Javinko. They are all as advertised. They are all fabulous footballers, uh, and the fact that Javinko has four goals, uh, uh, the fact that uh, Josie Altador has four goals, the fact that uh, Javinko has three assists, the fact that uh, Sheru. Uh, uh, has, I think, one of the best passing statistics and accuracy statistics in all of the league. He's got three assists so far. Uh, the fact that Altidore is, uh, uh, you know, in the chances that he's gotten, which have been relatively minimal, he's putting away pretty well everything uh, that's put in front of him. All of those are absolutely wonderful sort of harbingers for what's to come, at least we hope, for this club as the, uh, you know, the, uh, the home opener starts and we really get into the meat of the season. Because there's a lot of games, uh, there's a lot of games coming up, of course, during the month of May. Uh, so they're as good as advertised. Uh, Javinko, if he doesn't get goal of the week, a goal of the month, or a goal of the year candidate for a 35-yard Golazzo, I don't know what to say. I, I, I think the numbers are obviously going to be completely skewed. That was an absolutely fabulous goal. Uh, he's gotten three assists, as I mentioned as well, which I think is a little bit unheralded. So he's basically in on almost two-thirds of every Toronto FC goal, either scoring it or directly assisting uh, in scoring the goal. He's got 13 shots on goal 
uh, again, for a little guy who's getting knocked around uh, in, a, uh, in a fast athletic league, that's an absolutely tremendous statistic for the young man so far. The other big issue we've learned, of course, obviously, is the brittle defending. And, and yes, we have some uh, encouraging numbers from the last two games, the clean sheets, but again, we need to take a look at the, uh, at the quality of the opposition. Both Orlando and Philly are uh, below TFC in the standings. Orlando hasn't won a game at home. Uh, Philly has been, frankly, abject so far this season. So uh, it's really difficult to put a lot of stock into uh, uh, the value of the clean sheets other than the, uh, uh, the fact that I do think that they speak to uh, the other thing that we've learned uh, is that Greg Vanny is a little more of a pragmatist than, than many of us actually thought that he was going to be based on what we saw at the beginning of the season. He was playing, of course, that really uh, high line, that, that those fullbacks bombing on. You know, we've talked about it ad infinitum in this space uh, since the beginning of the season. Uh, the suicidal sort of coverage and uh, uh, setup that uh, was netting goals for the team, obviously, but letting uh, teams come in over the top and beat them wide. Uh, he's actually, I think, especially after the game in Dallas, uh, where it was just, you know, the same mistakes that were made in Salt Lake uh, the week before. He got a little more pragmatic and went with a very flat sort of a traditional, good old boring, uh, uh, you know, boring as oatmeal 442. But boy, it's working, isn't it? And uh, again, we need to take the quality of the opposition into consideration. But the fact that he actually was pragmatic enough to to not let dogma, for want of a better term, guide every decision that he was making and that he realized that sometimes you've got to actually change what you're doing uh, uh, based on the cards that you've been dealt and based on the circumstances uh, that you're facing. So uh, he reacted with a sensible game plan, finally, and, that, uh, uh, and then of course he managed the team and made them stick to that game plan as well. And here we are with a couple of successful results on the hop. Now this brings me back to what I mentioned earlier about that stat about the clean sheets. I wanted to take a look and see when was the last time Toronto FC kept two clean sheets back to back in Major League Soccer. Again, I just wanted to see how long it was. And I started looking at 2014. Nope. 2013. Uh-uh. 2012. No way, 2011, unbelievably no. He had to go all the way back to June of 2010. So almost five years ago for Toronto, uh, uh, for Toronto FC to actually have two successive clean sheets in a row on the bounce in Major League Soccer. They've had some periods where they've had those in, in Copper Champions League uh, competitions, but never in the league. And that just blew me away that it's almost five years since we've had two cleanies in a row. And that actually speaks to the abject nature of the defensive uh, setup of this team over those years uh, and how we've got to learn how to walk before we can run. There's players on this team that are going to score goals. I've been repeating it again in this space time after time after time. Your Altidores and your Jovinkos of the world are going to get TFC points. They're going to score goals. They've proven it so far already this season away from home 11 goals is a fabulous result. We don't need to play this suicidal sort of defensive, this, this all or nothing sort of defensive approach. Be sensible, be, be, you know, organized at the back, let the creative guys do their thing and keep it simple because at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's a simple game. It's a bunch of guys with a ball. Keep it in front of you. Let the creative guys do their thing. And, and more often than not, the quality is going to shine through and that's I think one of the other lessons uh, that this team needs to take away from how this road trip has actually ended. The only other thing I want to mention before I just quickly uh, finish up with uh, talks about Montreal and the home opener is Ashton Morgan hitting his 100th cap today for Toronto FC in all competitions. Toronto FC has played uh, upwards of 300 matches uh, so far if you take a look at uh, if you take a look at MLS games, if you take a look at Voyager's Cup games, if you take a look at friendlies, if you take a look at Champions League games, uh, all of those games pushing on 300 games. So in those 300 games, only now in year number nine have one player and nobody on the roster even remotely close to him uh, with this number finally hitting a century 
uh, of appearances, that's a, uh, that's a pretty damning indictment on uh, this little shield behind me here uh, over the last nine years. Let's hope that it doesn't take another nine years for uh, another player to hit a, 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 to hit a century like it took Ashton Morgan. Uh, you know, all the years that it's taken him to hit that number. So let's hope that, that uh, uh, you know, that's a record that gets broken pretty quickly. And again, let's hope it doesn't take that long again for anybody else because that's just such a damning indictment of what uh, has gone on at this club since day one. So I want to quickly uh, finish up. Uh, we've got the Voyager's Cup, of course, on Wednesday. Uh, I'm not going to mention the multi-level pyramid marketing people. Hey, they're putting their money in it. That's fine. But to me, it's the Voyager's Cup. And that's what it'll always be. Uh, it's TFC's first piece of silverware. It's important to me. It's important to a lot of our fans. Uh, teams have to learn how to win. Teams have to learn how to win together. So I really hope the TFC, within reason, doesn't throw uh, all of the kids or all of the scrubs out on the pitch on Wednesday because I want a bloody trophy and I don't think that uh, uh, getting an extra couple of games uh, you know by getting into the second round of the Voyager's Cup and getting into the final uh, and hopefully securing some silverware for this team I don't think that's going to get in the way seriously of, a, uh, of an MLS playoff run uh, trophies are what it's all about and I really hope that this team takes that into consideration so that's it. I'll have another video up on hopefully early uh, Thursday after what I hope to be TFC's uh, victory against uh, those Tic Tac Tabernacles from Montreal. And then of course it's onwards and upwards to the new and improved BMO Field next Sunday uh, as we home open finally against the Houston Dino. Thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a great week and come on you Reds. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.